Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will understand what do we mean by Gini impurity and how making use of Gini impurity is different from the classical ID3 algorithm for decision tree classification. Okay, so let's start. So I have some graphs here. I will explain it uh, at the later part of this video. But in order to understand what Gini impurity is, so it is given by the formula Gi is equal to one minus in case of binary classification, so let's consider we are dealing with binary classification problem for now. Okay. So in case of binary classification, we will have either S or no, two classes, right? So the Gini impurity for binary classification is given as 1 minus probability of S square plus probability of no square. Right? So it's not there, it will be here. So probability of S square plus probability of N square. Right. So let us consider we have a data set called as D1 and it has five records in it. Okay. Out of five records, let's say we have two S and three No's. So S and No are our class, the target labels. And out of five records in the data set, two records belongs to class S and three records belongs to class No. So how do we calculate the Gini impurity for this data set? It is calculated as Gini impurity is equal to 1 minus. What is the probability of S? It is 2 out of 5, right? So 2 out of 5 square plus 3 out of 5 square. Okay. So it will be 1 minus 4 by 25 plus 9 by 25. So if you do the math, it will be 0 0.48. So this is how you compute the Gini impurity. So let's take another example. Let's say we have another data set D2. Here also we will have five records. But in this case, we will have only one record belonging to the class S and remaining four records will belong to the class No. Okay. So if we calculate the Gini impurity for this, it will be 1 minus, it will be a 1 by 5 squared plus 4 by 5 squared. So it will be 1 minus 1 by 25 plus 16 by 25. If you do the math, it will come out to be 0 0.32. Okay. So let us say we have another document wherein we will have equal number of records belonging to both the classes. So let's say we have another data set with 10 records. Okay. So just I am taking the even number to consider even number of. Uh, records belonging to both the classes. Okay. So let's say we have five records belonging to S class and five records belonging to no class. So the probability of S is 0 0.5 and probability of no is also 0 0.5. Correct. So in this case, Gini impurity will be 1 minus 0.5 square plus 0.5 square. Correct. Why? Because it will be 5 by 10, 5 by 10. Correct. So and squaring it. So it will be 1 minus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25. So this will be further simplified and can be written as 1 minus 0 0.5. So the Gini impurity will be 0 0.5. Okay. So this is how you compute the Gini impurity. Right. So once we have this impurity, instead of entropy, we will make use of this Gini impurity to compute the information gain. So, how do you compute the information gain? It's the same thing. Information gain is given as parent Gini, parent Gini impurity minus weighted average multiplied with Gini of child. Correct? So, this is what the information gain formula looks like. So, it is the same formula, but instead of entropy here, we are making use of Gini. In case of ID3 algorithm, instead of Gini, it was entropy in both the places. Instead of Gini child, it will be entropy child. Correct? So, one assignment, if you guys can take it from me, consider the same data set that we have here and try to identify the split based on Gini impurity instead of ID3 algorithm. Okay. So you can take that as an assignment. 
Now we will do a simple comparison between entropy and Gini impurity. Okay, and also talk about which one is good and which one is bad. Okay, so if you plot the graphs for Gini impurity and entropy in case of binary classification, so I am strictly talking about binary classification. Okay, if you do the comparison between the max and min values for both of these uh, terms, entropy and Gini impurity, the max value the Gini impurity can have is 0.5, the max value entropy can have is 1 with respect to binary classification. We know that if we have more than two classes, the entropy can go beyond 1, right? So, right now we are strictly talking about binary classification, okay? So, the max value a Gini impurity can take is 0.5 and the min value it can take is 0. Similarly, the max value entropy can take is 1 and minimum value it can take is 0, right? And this is how we compute entropy. So, this is entropy, correct? And this is our Gini impurity. So, if you take a look at the mathematical formula here, in case of entropy, we are computing log to the base 2. And with, with respect to Gini impurity, there is no log as such. We are just squaring the probabilities, correct? So, if you compare these two, computationally, Gini impurity is fast. Okay. So, you can, if you want to speed up the training process or to construct the decision tree, you can make use of Gini impurity instead of entropy. Okay. But Gini impurity will often lead to overfitting. It has a tendency, it will make decision tree to overfit on the given data set. Okay. Entropy gives us better results, right? So, there is a separate research paper which talks about the difference between Gini impurity and entropy. Entropy gives you a more balanced tree, right? When I say more balanced tree, it gives the better results when compared to Gini impurity, okay? Gini impurity will often lead to overfitting, right? So, the choice of making use of Gini impurity or Entropy is actually up to us. So, it is actually a hyperparameter. In case of decision tree, of uh, which term or which method we need to use, if it is ID3, it will be using entropy. If it is not entropy, if we want it to use Gini impurity, we need to specify that. So, whether to use entropy or Gini impurity, it is it's up to us. Right? It is up to us. So, and we cannot blindly say that okay Gini impurity will work better on this data set and entropy will work better on another data set right so this is actually a choice we have to make by hyperparameter tuning okay so that's it about Gini impurity and hope this is useful for you guys so if you have understood how id3 algorithm works you can apply the same computations instead of entropy you go on calculating Gini impurity at every step in order to identify the split okay so, that's it for this video. If you guys like it, give it a thumbs up and share it among your peers. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. So, till we see in the next video, happy learning. Bye-bye.